180,000 miles away. Science is more essential for our prosperity, our security, our health, our environment, and our quality of life than it has ever been before. For we must always remember that somewhere in America, there's a child with an inquisitive mind staring up at the night sky. And maybe she has the potential to change our world, but she doesn't know it yet. We say science is like magic, but it's interesting that, that we even have a, a division between the two, right? Because, um, because we use science to say like, well, this is what's real about the world. And then magic is like, well, it's what's like not real. Like something's only magical if it like seems like it couldn't really happen. But I think that when we're outside, when we're learning environmental science, when we're watching it happen, we realize that the real world, the scientific thing, is completely magical. It, it, is, it is magic. Like, there's no division between the two. Kids are here for six periods a day. They're with us for one or two periods a day. I'm interested in, are they having fun? Do they want to come to class? Do they like what they're doing? And are they passionate? Because I've found that all of those things are what really make people positive and feel positive towards school. I think children are natural born scientists. They, they learn by doing things and they learn by trying things, most of which don't work. To me, that's what's important about science is not memorizing facts. It's learning how to ask questions. For decades, we led the world in educational attainment, and as a consequence, we led the world in economic growth. But in this new economy, we've come to trail other nations in graduation rates, in educational achievement, and in the production of scientists and engineers. One of the essential features of being a human is that we are so knowledge dependent. And that knowledge that we depend upon is, is, has been accumulating over years and centuries and millennia in a, in a systematic way that we call science. Science is a way of asking questions and getting new information. And we need this information, whether it's designing a computer chip or growing a better crop or having clean water or having sustainable fisheries, having ecosystems that can function and, and, and give people the things we need from them. Uh, this is all dependent upon scientific knowledge. So what I've seen is definitely students be, lose interest in science, and I think the biggest thing is that they don't see the application of it. I, I feel like it's a, it's a problem that we're teaching these things abstractly, but I think the reason for that is that we're thinking of them abstractly. I mean, the reason that we have all these environmental crises is because people think that economics is one thing and environmentalism is a whole other thing, right? But they're really the same thing, and we can teach it that way. I think that kids are curious and we create an environment where and there's there's several things so there's first is it's taught in abstraction second of all it's the not communicated to them effectively what people in science and engineering actually do and what they contribute to the world um, and then I would say that the other thing is just the even the stereotypes of what someone who does science looks like or is or what they do is not necessarily a positive stereotype and when I was in elementary school we played. Now I just hear it's like death by worksheet. You know what I mean? I, I, I'm trying to think of like elementary school. I turned out okay. I'm thinking like, what did I do? Like there was lots of dodgeball, you know? We did a lot of plays. Um, I remember we had this parachute we flipped up and down, you know? Um, there was some math, like CompuCat worksheets and, and, and things like that. And a lot of like the teacher working around us working independently. But I don't remember what I see now, which is like, kids doing standardized tests at kindergarten and first grade and second grade and getting test anxiety about how they're going to do because there's so much stress and us just teaching the test and taking all the joy. And, and we're having lots of sort of, in some sense, silly debates that go on in our society because so many people know so little about science. And, and it's uh, unfortunate that, that our educational system is not helping people understand the process of science and understanding what uh, the status of current scientific knowledge is because it means we waste a lot of time um, debating issues which scientists don't consider to be issues anymore, which are really well answered in science. And so, I mean, one is, is the whole issue of climate change. 
And the fact that we need to discuss this over and over and over again, and the fact that it's debated by politicians and others, I think is a very sad commentary on the quality of science education that we have in our country. When I first started out, I had this vision of project-based learning and I was going to come in and we were going to work on this and then immediately, you know, the educational system, you know, corrected that thought. The problem was that the metrics to evaluate me as a teacher all led me to trend more and more towards lecture-based education because the results that I was getting were reinforced by using that model. So even though I wanted to do projects, so I started out and I did some lecture, then we do some projects and some lecture and projects. And then suddenly the standardized test would come in April. And I was like, April? Well, school ends in June. Well, I got two more months of stuff I got to teach and that's supposed to be on the test. What's, oh, well, if I take the projects out, then I can race through the material and get done. And then we can do projects at the end of the year. So I became basically a test prep guru. We've, we've reached the point where the standardized testing has caused us to behave completely irrationally as an educational society. Growing up is sort of like when you write the same word over and over and it starts to lose meaning, or when you speak the same word over and over and it just doesn't sound right anymore. I feel like when you fill out a worksheet about soil over and over and over without touching soil, getting your hands dirty, it's, it sort of loses meaning in the same way. It becomes something abstract. It becomes something that exists only on worksheets, um, occasionally maybe in a classroom video. You don't have the opportunity to like trip over something, accidentally learn something totally new, you know, flip over a stump. And instead of just being able to answer the question on the worksheet, you see something you've never seen before and you ask a question about it. People are becoming more aware that a child's direct surroundings or the environment in which they're learning has the most impact on how they view the world that they live in. So if you can remove the walls, if you can turn the gray to green, if you can go for walks in the neighborhood, if you can expose them, you know, to um, the world, then they will perceive their world as such. What I first do is I introduce to them the fact that this garden is a farm, a classroom, and a science lab. And when we're out here, we're farmers, we're scientists, and, um, and we're students. When they, when they start to get used to that as they're going through these lessons, they start to see that this is something, this is something tangible, this is something um, important, something that affects me. Then they start to get into it. They start to focus more and I feel like they learn a lot more. All right, let's talk again about what was in here. What was in the sauce that we made? Yogurt with cucumber. I love the food science stuff. I love um, when the kids learn where their food comes from and what it takes to grow food. I feel like that's really important. I feel like that just shifts their whole wor worldview to learn that, you know, lettuce doesn't just come from the supermarket. That's something that a lot of kids don't understand until much later in life. And I feel like it, it affects your food choices. It affects how you think about the world. Um, convinced at this point that school gardens are incredibly important. So the, the learning environment that we have here is based on a concept of project-based learning and design-based learning. The vested interest in a project is far more valuable than just teaching students things in abstraction. I think that's obvious. I mean, I don't think anyone denies or, or disbelieves that. I think that education is just a very conservative, entrenched model that's, that's you know, sticking to how it's been forever. Each year we compete in the first robotics competition, and what we have to do is in six weeks, we have to design and build a robot to compete in a specific challenge and we really pushed the envelope of what we can teach students. And it was the first robotics challenge that really showed me what students could wanna do, could be able to do, and you know, just you know, kinda of just help them reach their hopes and dreams. I think what's, what's exciting is we are empowering our students to believe that they can create things. 
And so when they look at something, they say, well, I could never create a bio. I mean, it doesn't really matter what project we're doing. We're giving students the tools and the know-how to say, I started with nothing and I brought something to fruition over a sustained period of time. Any of these big ideas that we're trying to deal with, these, these larger problems, are not something that someone's gonna solve in a day. And so by helping students to be able to work on something over a long period of time with a growth, you know, a learning over time, that's really preparing them to the, for the type of experience that it will take and also giving them the confidence that they could look at a problem and say, okay, that's a really challenging problem. The robotics does this very well. Very, very challenging problem. We have no idea how to do it. And then we get there and we end up with a solution. When you teach science through an environmental lens and especially a hands-on one, then I feel like it's a lot less abstract. And even as you get older, if you, if you can keep the focus on the way that those things affect the world around you, um, then I feel like kids would remain interested in science. As you know, scientific discovery takes far more than the occasional flash of brilliance, as important as that can be. But it holds a promise like no other area of human endeavor. We know that the quality of math and science teachers is the single most influential factor in determining whether uh, a student will succeed or fail in these subjects. And so today I want to challenge you to use your love and knowledge of science to spark the same sense of wonder and excitement in a new generation. The environment is saying it's time to wake up right now and teachers you need because this is our future in your hands and you need to take a hold of this and work with it because we don't have a lot of time if you if you are not in on this and participating. I wish we were teaching science as a hands-on activity where students were able to come in and ask a question and try to figure some way out to answer it. Because that's, that is the essence of science. That's the fun. That's why scientists love to do it as a career. For me, they've got five other AP classes when they're juniors and seniors. I'd rather have them for my hour a day. Let's do something innovative and different. Let's make a difference. Kids.